This week is uh, week five of Intro to Youth Ministry, and um, it's a lot of reading. Uh, this is, I, I think, the largest uh, chunk of reading. Uh, it covers uh, quite a few chapters, but they're not uh, they're not super long, and um, but they're very diverse. So this section of uh, of the book deals with uh, the practice of youth ministry and different models of youth ministry, and uh, thinking theologically about them. So that's an important thing to, to keep in mind that um, always in the background uh, when working in youth ministry and formulating models of youth ministry is to think about the theological implications and how does this model mesh with um, our theology, pastoral theology, biblical theology, and so forth. And so um, that's kind of the task for this. And it, again, there's so many chapters here even though they're not that long individually, to get collectively they are. Um, even though uh, this is covering so much that it's really not even practical for me to try to give an overview of all of them, uh, you'll just need to read it. I want that to be kind of your focus as you are uh, doing this reading. Is um, how do you theologic? How do you, how do you how would you fit? Uh, any and or all of these models into your theology and um, you know are there inconsistencies and so one of the things and, and I think the sort of intro to this uh, section that is in the book itself that sort of uh, um, you know, tells the story about the youth rally that didn't go well um, it gives an, a, a very brief overview of these chapters and then says that uh, you know, as reading through these, you may have a problem with some of them. You may disagree with some of them. They may not be theologically compatible for you. And that's kind of what I want you to think about here. It's not that any of these are something that I am pushing, or even I think that the authors uh, or editors of this book are pushing, as much as they are a sampling of different approaches to youth ministry. And so take them as that. Uh, they, there may be things here that you find helpful, there may be things that you think, no, you know, and in my own experience in seminary, uh, there were certainly things like that. There were whole classes that I took that um, I thought, yeah, I have no use for this. Uh, and you may find some of this uh, to be that way as well. And that's okay, um, because that's all that process of thinking through it theologically. And that's what I want our uh, discussion question for this week to be as well. I want you to, after having... Uh, and again, you don't, th this is a get a taste, right? You don't need to dissect each one of these. Um, but after you've gotten a sampling of these different approaches to youth ministry, different models of youth ministry, I want you to step back and think theologically about them. And I want you to start really with this chapter especially, or with this uh, set of readings especially, start thinking about your philosophy of youth ministry. That's, of course, the main, like the major paper for this class. By the way, speaking of papers, if you have not yet written or gotten to me your um, review of iGen, that was actually due at the end of last week, I'm pretty gracious, so I'll take it. But uh, the longer you uh, stretch that out uh, without getting it to me, um, the more I'm going to take off on that, the harder I'm going to grade it. So please do get that to me as soon as possible. I know this class is a lot of reading, but there's very little other responsibilities for you beyond that, so that I think it, it evens out. Um, but uh, you need to be start, start thinking about your second paper, which is due at the end of the course, and that is your philosophy of youth ministry. And it's a little longer paper, and it's more of a creative paper rather than responding to uh, to a book like the previous one was. But you know, this is this is um, data. This is fodder for that. This is uh, the building blocks from which you can construct that. So this this set of readings, I think, especially is where you ought to start thinking about. You know, what do I? What what would my philosophy be? Well, what? What do I find here that's helpful? And, and so that's the, the question really is I want you to, you know, having, having read through these different samplings, what do you see that is useful? Um, and it doesn't have to be just one. You don't have to latch onto one approach. You know, she talks about, uh, uh, for example, 
one of the chapters is on uh, youth ministry through evangelism. Um, you don't have to pick just one and say, well, this is what I think the best model of youth ministry is. Uh, I really don't think that any one of them is perfect or is um, all you need. You really do need bits and pieces of all of them. But, but try to pick out a few different approaches to youth ministry that you would find helpful or that you have found to be helpful if you are working in youth ministry or have experience in that. Um, what seems like the best approach to you? And um, also bear in mind that there may not, that the context also matters a lot. I, I have worked as a youth pastor in multiple settings, multiple churches, and what worked well in one church with one group of kids may not work that well with the other. So if you are a one-trick pony and you only know how to do youth ministry one way, uh, good luck because you people are different and people respond to different. I had one youth group that uh, they were not, you know, they were very athletic, right? They were, it was in Texas and they were all, uh, you know, athletes and very physically minded and they liked to run and they were very energetic. They always wanted to be doing things. So youth ministry had to be very activity focused, a lot of fun and games. Um, and it was hard. The challenge there was getting them to sit still and to actually learn something or to participate in worship. Um, it's not that they didn't get anything out of it. I think there was spiritual growth that went on, a tremendous spiritual growth, I think, but it happened in a different way. Uh, the next youth group that I worked with was very different. They were not athletic. They were more studious, and they were um, they liked actually their sometimes their favorite part seemed to be Bible study or worship, and they asked a lot of questions and they liked discussion. And so I, you know, and that really played to my strengths. I thought I I had a lot of learning curve with this other youth group, but the second one played to my strengths, and so that that worked very well. Uh, but uh, you know, you you can't always expect that. Uh, you're going to have to be stretched, and you're going to have to grow, and you're going to have to do things that you may not uh, necessarily find to come natural for you. So start thinking about a few different uh, methods that you might find useful. And also, the second part here is what do you not see as useful? Surely there's going to be at least one or two chapters here that you just have kind of a gut reaction against. And why you know so so pick out a few that you find to be helpful and talk about why they may be helpful or why you gravitate towards them and then uh, maybe one or two that you don't see as being as helpful even if you say well you know there may be some context in which that would be helpful uh, but maybe maybe there's a theological conflict and you may just outright say no i don't think that i think that's a bad thing to do I think that sends the wrong message. I think that is bad theology. That is bad practice, and we shouldn't be doing it. So just explore that, and um, you know, it's as with all the discussions. I'm really just interested in the thought process. I'm interested in seeing that you're uh, you're working through these issues, not that you necessarily come up with the answer, uh, which may be different from mine. Uh, so I will leave you to this again. A long, uh, a lot of reading here. Uh, so try to try to get the big picture uh, for each of the approaches, and I will leave you to it.